You hear a knock at the door. You're expecting trick-or-treaters, but when you answer, no one is there. However, something is a bone-white envelope with crimson wax seal lying on the doormat. Picking it up, you look around for a delivery person, but are met with only the blank stare of your jack-o'-lantern. On one side of the envelope is your name, handwritten in calligraphy, and the unmistakable imprint of a skull in the wax on the other. You crack the seal and remove the contents. It appears to be an invitation, and it reads, The honor of your presence is requested for a haunting house party at the old mansion, commonly known as the Grindhouse. Tonight, All Hallows' Eve, 8 o'clock sharp, come for the food, drinks, and ghosts. Stay for 12 hours and win, win $10 million. Hello again, gamers. Welcome back to the Board Game Captain. I'm the Board Game Captain. I'm Lynn. And today we're going to be reviewing and showing you how to play Grindhouse. So first things first, I want to give a big thank you to Everything Epic Games who sent us this copy of Grindhouse to play with and have fun with and do content with. Uh, thank you, Everything Epic Games. So this, this game was published by Everything Epic Games and it was designed by John Cohn. Now, this is a classic horror movie themed game. Very, uh, very much has a... A, a theme that sounds like it could have been the theme to like a B horror movie from the 80s to me or maybe even the maybe even the 70s or 90s for that matter there were there is some crossover in those sort of themes but it, it really feels like an 80s horror movie theme to me like I went when yeah it, well it reminds me of um house on haunted hill with vincent price because they're well, all that's stuck, like they're all stuck in the in the house yeah. they're trying to win the money and they go and they're exploring the different rooms and they get killed so that well that's not very 80s that's more 50s or 60s like that. somewhere if either that's 50s or 60s see i was thinking of of uh the movie waxwork with um where where the uh uh they wind up in the in the in the the wax museum and david warner is showing them around and they get they get sucked into the waxwork displays and get killed by the the monsters depicted there. That was the kind of feeling I was getting. So we're actually coming at this from different perspectives. I'm thinking 80s horror. You're thinking like classic 50s and 60s horror. So, well, there you go on that. All right, so let's have a look at this game and what comes in the box. But before we get started, I do want to throw out a, a little bit of a warning. Uh, this game has a bit of a mature theme. It does uh, say, uh, by the way, we didn't go over this. It's, uh, the game is listed as being for two to six players for ages 14 and up. And it doesn't seem to be a it, time limit, but it's very yeah. quick. Yeah, this is a pretty quick game. I would say like half an hour or less. Mm -hmm. uh, probably significantly less. As we've gotten quicker with it. We've, we've come in even under 20 minutes. Uh, more, um, more players don't actually add a length to it because... Everything kind of happens at the same time. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, there's not a time estimate, but it is a pretty fast game. As for the two to six players, I would recommend this at three plus. Mm -hmm. You want a good number of players. Three is, in my opinion, the minimum to have that good number. Two is two back and forth in this. It's playable at two, but the voting system, uh, which is my favorite way to decide when someone doesn't want to volunteer for something is not workable at two players and also um two players just doesn't feel like there's enough variety of different goals out there would you agree to that yeah so I, I like it better at three and more now the 14 and up though that was what i was alluding to this is a game with some mature themes in it and it's also got some gruesome artwork uh you're gonna your character is going to have arms cut off and possibly have their head explode and there are going to be cards that involve monsters or people Killing and eating people and <laughs> things like that. Horror movie tropes. If you're into horror movies, this is going to be your jam. But if you are squeamish about such themes, this might not be the game for you. So I wanted to start with that because before we open it and start showing all the gruesome pictures and such, you know, you should you should know that. Now, granted, it is done in a cartoony and lighthearted way. So if you're okay with cartoon violence, even when there's lots of blood, you'll be fine with this. Am I right on that? Yeah. Yeah. All right, so let's open it up and let's look at the components. 
So first thing is the rulebook. Now, the rulebook is very good. Uh, it's very full of diagrams which show you how to do the injuries and, and how, to, how everything works, as well as having a full example of play. The actual rules of the game are only 10 pages, and that includes the example of play. Uh, and then there's some stuff about their expansions, one of which comes in the box, comes with mm -hmm. the Krampus expansion. But there are a couple other expansions, apparently. There's a Cthulhu expansion, because of course there is. And there's a Carnival expansion, which that I'd be interested in checking out, for sure. I'd actually be interested in checking out the Cthulhu one, too, for that matter. It's just every game gets an obligatory Cthulhu expansion. Mm -hmm. um, this is a really good rulebook. It's, it's, like I said, lots of diagrams, lots of illustrations. Uh, it leaves no ambiguities, nothing to the imagination, and it's very quick to shoot through. Like, I shot through this in, in under 10 minutes and was ready to teach you, and we knew how to play. It was that quick. Uh, now, instead of a board, we have a neoprene mat, but I want to talk about this a little bit because it's gorgeous. Well, I mean, this is just... Look at this thing. For, I mean, this, is, this feels an above and beyond thing to me. The production on having choosing to have... The neoprene mat with this really nice illustration of the haunted house behind it is awesome. I love this mat. Um, what are your thoughts on the mat, by the way? I like it. I prefer the mats because they tend to lay more flat than a board. Mm. And uh, But also the illustration is just beautiful, isn't it? Yeah. And then, of course, there's no seams because it's a mat. Mm -hmm. There is that. So then you've got some cardboard punch-out pieces. Now, here's where, you know, this is a component where if you've seen cardboard punch-out pieces, you've seen them all. But, uh, so these pieces are for the wounds because on your starting player boards, it shows your, your character unwounded and therefore healthy. And if you take a wound on a body part, you'll get an injured bit. And this is where some of the gruesomeness comes. And if you take another wound, the body part will be severed. And for the head, you take a wound and you'll be a little wounded in the head bit. And if you take a second wound, you will, whoops, I had it upside down, you'll actually have your head severed or blown off, depending on what kind of wound that was. Now, we've got uh, tons of cards in here, but you're going to see a lot of these out. There's little item cards and bigger, uh, I'm just going to show the backs of some of these. I don't want to give away some of the components, except for the ones that we have to for the, for the tutorial. But you have Persona cards, which are on the front. Uh, I'm just going to give one away here. You have a, it tells you what the persona is, what your goal is to win, and then if you become a ghost, how you win as a ghost. Because even though you can die in this, you don't get eliminated. There's no player elimination in here. You come back as a ghost and still have a chance to win, which is awesome. The doors are much the same. They have, they'll have doors on the back, but then, uh, and the door will tell you what kind of room it is, like this is the family room. But then when you flip it over, it has lots of text which tells you what to do for that room. We'll show you all that while we're playing the game. Um, we have one of, uh, pretty much the only, uh, the only production complaint I have. So, all right, we've got a bunch of characters. Now, the character illustrations are great. Uh, you've got here, this is Miguel. Miguel looks like a businessman. We have Alex. Alex looks like a stereotypical nerd. <laughs> yeah, we have Zara. Zara is the stereotypical punker. Uh, we have Evan. Evan is totally... A hipster? It, I don't know. He's he looks wearing, like a metal metalhead a little bit. He's wearing like a woolly sweater. Yeah, he is into cats. It says so in his storyline. <laughs> Uh, oh yeah, he's got tons of cats. It says so, really? they all they all have a storyline. Yeah, it says you love cats. In fact, you have twelve of them. <laughs> Unfortunately, you heard about a recall for their food too late, and now all your feline friends are covered in unsightly tumors. The good yeah. news, the good news is there's an experimental procedure that could cure them, but it costs hundreds of thousands of dollars per cat. Multiply that by twelve, and you don't see how you will ever be able to pay for the treatment. Hence, why he agrees. <laughs> to join up with this contest in the house. I want him to win every time so he can save his kitty. Then why do you keep making me lose his head? <laughs> I didn't know you had cats. Then we have Nina here and Jody. And Jody was the one I was showing the damage and severed limbs of. So that's what her limbs look like when they are all healthy. Now, uh, the, my complaint is not with the art or the look of these or the fact that they have straw on. That is all great. I love all that. My complaint is just how thin these are. I would have liked a little bit thicker, a little bit more substantial boards for the player boards. But that's a minor complaint. But that, you know, you can see these are pretty, pretty thin. I mean, they're, they're could, basically cards. Yeah, I mean, you could always laminate them if you really were yeah. worried. Or mount them. You can laminate yeah. them or mount them. But the, like I say, otherwise, I think the, the production of this game is really good. 
Uh, my first thing I wanted to rave about with the production was the board. The second thing I want to rave about is these dice. You have a bag of these dice. They are blood spattered dice with with it's gold like numbers. It's more like blood swirl. Okay, blood swirled. That's fine. We'll say blood swirled. <laughs> But, I mean, you know, obviously that's what they're going for. Yeah. And these are fantastic. So that's everything that comes in the box. Now we're going to take you over to the table. And we're going to talk about how this game plays and how it feels. And then we're going to come back and we'll rate it and review it. Okay, so here we are set up for a three-player game of Grindhouse. So I'm on this side of the table, and I'm going to be controlling Evan here, while I have the third player uh, set up over here that I'll also be controlling, who is Nina. And Lynn? I have Jody. And Lynn is on that side of the table over there. So now, the way you set up for the very first game, you're going to have to shuffle up all the card decks before playing. But it does recommend that you don't shuffle them between games so you can make sure to get all new rooms and all new personas as you go on. So for this game, because we've already played this, we had, did not shuffle the deck. We just dealt up a bunch of new rooms and a new final room. Our new rooms for this game are the dungeon, the dollhouse, the conference, the family room. And then our final room is the kennel. Uh, we each get dealt two Persona cards and two item cards and pick one of each of those to keep. The rest of the Personas are removed from the game. They will not be needed. The item deck is reshuffled along with the discarded ones that we did not choose. And that is kept near the board because uh, we may need new item cards. We also take all of the body uh, part wounded tokens. They show on one side that body part being wounded. And, and when you take a wound there... You will place it on your board, now showing wounded. And on the other side, after the second wound, they show the body part severed. So, uh, including uh, the head, which if you, if you wind up with a severed head or a double wound to the chest, which shows a skull and crossbones on it, either of those and you are dead. But when you die in this game, there is no player elimination, which is really cool. You get to play on as a ghost. You announce what your ghost goals are, and you can win as in addition to a player who has won. Normally, a surviving player wins by having the most points. You get two points per healthy body part, one point per wounded body part, no points per uh, eliminated body part, and then you have extra points that you can earn from cards like your Persona card. Now, usually, having the most points after we get through all the rooms and being a surviving player, you will win the game, but then also there are some ghosts that are able to win even if all the players die, and there are ghosts that are able to win in addition to a player that has won for having the most points. If all the players die and none of them were ghosts that had a win condition that was met, then the game wins. And in that way, this game is rather semi-cooperative. So without any further ado, we're going to roll off to see who gets the highest point total and therefore who is going to be the starting player. Uh, I got a three and Nina got a four. I got a six. Oh, so you are going to be our first starting player. So Lynn, why don't you take us to the dungeon and start us off. I would like to reveal my persona first. Oh, you have an ability that... Uh, oh, some personas do have abilities that when you reveal them, you get to take special effects. What is your persona? My persona is the masochist. Masochist? Masochist. <laughs> <laughs> have, you, have you got that? <laughs> so what does the masochist do? Um, if I reveal this card... Well, if you reveal this card, you may choose to take an extra injury once per room. And then... It changes my my limb points. At the end of the game, score plus two points for every limb you have lost. Score no points for healthy limbs. And score plus two points for wounded head or torso. What the hell? So I want, <laughs> I want, I want to have no limbs and have my head and torso wounded for max points. <laughs> uh, damned it. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, that's weird. Um, but of course, you don't want to die. No, you still need I, to, you, yeah. you need to survive, but be severely wounded. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's move on. So this is the dungeon. A chill runs through your spine as you see a wall full of whips, riding crops, canes, and cat o nine tails, all hanging from hooks. On the other side of the room stands a line of boards with blood-soaked ropes hanging down from the top. The host stands by the flagellation implements that, you know, they, they missed 
they missed an opportunity to say flagellation station. <laughs> Just saying. Okay, so, move on. The host stands by the flagellation implements and gleefully ponders your fate. What shall we use today? I think we will stick with the classics and bring out the whip. It doesn't have a stop thing. Well, then, uh, Let's keep going. keep going. Each survivor must roll a die to determine the number of lashes they receive. Each lash causes one body part to be wounded, starting with the torso. A survivor cannot have any body parts severed from a lashing unless they have no uninjured body parts left. All right, so we roll a die and we have to take that many injuries on singular body parts, but you get to take an extra injury. If It, it says I may, so... May, huh? It's my choice, but it starts with the torso, so you have to injure your All torso. All right, let's see what I got here. I rolled, oh, I rolled a five. <laughs> I got a six. <laughs> but you want to be injured. I, I know, but I don't know if I want to be this injured this early. <laughs> this quickly. Well, you're, you're taking seven injuries. Congratulations. One, oh, but you can't lose any limbs anyway. Two. Because it said you couldn't. Unless you oh, you don't have any limbs to... It was... Uh, unless you have no uninjured body parts left. So you can. So three. Oh, let me roll for the other four, character over here. They only got a one. Five. But it had to start with their torso, right? Six. Okay. So it's just six is every single. Oh, that's wow. Legs don't go over there. <laughs> no, they don't. <laughs> what are you doing? I don't know. <laughs> okay. So I had to take one. Let's see. I don't want to take the head injured. So one, that's, two, three, four, five. It's a lot on the first room. Yeah. And um, wow. Okay. So that was it. And that was a terribly violent first room for two of our three characters here. That was really, really rough. So we're going to move on. Uh, Nina will now be our first player, and uh, I will read for her. So you immediately feel thousands of eyes staring at you as you discover the room is literally covered in dolls. Oh, no. While some are pristine ceramic creations, others are missing arms, burned, or hanging from nooses. In the center of the overstuffed room, there sits a large dollhouse, which looks identical to the grindhouse. You see through the windows that there are lights on inside. One player must volunteer to open the door. <laughs> I'm actually going to have Nina volunteer to open the door because she ain't injured. She ain't injured at all. <laughs> She's doing just fine. You bend over and open the dollhouse door. Inside, there are a series of dolls bearing a striking resemblance to each survivor in the center of the room. There is a single chair. Okay, so FYI, um, if Nina had decided she did not want to volunteer and nobody wanted to volunteer, we would do... Now, we... There are multiple ways the game has that you can resolve that. We have chosen to do the democratic method since there are three players in this game and we could have voted on it, but Nina decided she wanted to volunteer. So choose one doll to place in the chair, then roll a die and refer to the table below. So Nina is going to place, let me just check her persona here and know what her goal was again. Nina's gonna place herself in the chair. She wants to place her own doll in the chair. Let's see what happens. So she's going to roll a die. You a freak, Nina. And Nina loves it. <laughs> <laughs> so Nina rolls a two. A glass dome descends from the dollhouse ceiling. Suddenly, the matching survivor starts choking and suffers two head wounds. Oh, crud. <laughs> that did not go Nina's way. Nina dead. So Nina is dead. Nina takes two head wounds. So first head wound makes Nina's head injured. Second head wound makes it gone, which means Nina is now deceased so ouch that's rough now nina immediately becomes a ghost um nina nina's ghost is uh ghost ability is at the end of each room you may wound one survivor's limb of your choice if any survivors are limbless at the end of the game you win too Ooh, look at that and oh we're at the end of a room uh nina is gonna wound me and cut off one of my limbs what about me? I get two points. <laughs> well, she, she decided to, to come after me. So this is how the game plays. We go through all of the rooms, the final room being the toughest. The only difference in the final room versus the earlier rooms is that at the end of the final room, ghosts are not allowed to take their ghost abilities. Then we check to see who has the most points, 
and or if the ghost players have found a way to to meet their specific requirement in order to win and what of what players either have the most points or are a ghost player and have met their ghost requirements will be the winner or winners of the game unless all players have died and no ghost players had that as part of the requirement in which case the game wins and we all lose so that's how you play the game of grindhouse so now we're going to head back and we're going to talk about how this game plays and how it feels and we're going to rate it and review it okay so welcome back that oh, oh the time 20 to 30 minutes oh that's pretty dead on then isn't it <laughs> this is how you play that was how you play the game of grindhouse Oh, we got that in there. I, yeah. I, it was on the back. We, yeah. we must not have noticed it before. So yeah, it says 20 to 30 minutes, which is a really good estimate because that was actually what we were saying in yes. the intro. So this game is is very interesting. Uh, I would say the theme is most like a storytelling game. Mm -hmm. um, you read a story and then it tells you what to do. And when you're taking wounds, there's a lot of randomness uh for, for how things happen because you have to roll dice but there are items to mitigate that and if you manage to strategically take wounds to have healthy limbs healthy arms or legs can often give you bonuses to certain rolls especially sometimes in final rooms yeah um fyi uh the game we were showing for the tutorial portion we decided to finish that game and lin won so both my characters lost <laughs> um so now there's so there's definitely it's like a semi-cooperative game and I say semi-cooperative because sometimes you have a hidden goal that you want other people to die. Mm -hmm. uh, but if everybody dies, usually unless you have a, a, a ghost goal that everyone else had to die, um, if everyone dies, usually everyone loses. Mm -hmm. uh, but this game plays much quicker than most other storytelling or even cooperative games. Because there's only four rooms. It's, it, then, it's four in the, in and the then, final room. Yeah. So five rooms total. So it's, it's pretty quick. It's a really... it's it, I, I would say this is both uh, in regard to our, um, our storytelling games. This is the fastest fully functional storytelling game we have in our collection. Yeah, it's also the most deadly. It's very deadly. <laughs> you can die very quickly in this game. Tales of the Arabian Nights used to be the most deadly. <laughs> not, not any longer. Yes, so the... It, then also, though, it's it's also one of the quickest of the semi-cooperatives that we have. Usually those are a bit longer. This is a, it fits in at a much more um, lighter weight for time uh, and even for rules, too. This is kind of like a, a, a lightweight storytelling yeah, and, and semi-cooperative game. It's short enough that you could do a couple in a row. Oh, yeah, definitely. And because of how you're not supposed to keep reshuffling the cards after your first game, you'll, you know, if you do a couple in a row, the games will be totally different because the rooms will be different, the personas will be different, everything's going to be different. Um, what items you start with will be different. So, okay. Uh, let's start with some downsides. So I have, I had one minor downside I talked about in the intro that I thought the, the player boards are a bit flimsy. They're kind of thin. But that's not, that's a very minor gripe. Um, the rest of the production of this game is fantastic. So I'll get to that in a second because that's a positive. Did you have any negatives you want to draw out? Um, my only negative is that it really is like almost too short. Oh, you but, wish there was more game But it's to like, it. it's, the thing is, is that it's not, it's like the right length. For how deadly it is, it mm, would have to mm -hmm. be less deadly if it was longer. Right. Okay. Because like. But you just so that that sounds like you really like it though, because you want more game. Yeah. You want more game time in this game. So well, you're a big storytelling game fan, so that's not that surprising to me. Um, my only real complaint is how random a lot of things are. But with a lot of these storytelling games, there's usually a fair amount of randomness. Uh, but the even with the amount of randomness that's in this, I actually quite like this game. I think it's it's even even with the randomness, there's ways like it's not immediately apparent on your first play, but after you play it a few times, you realize there are ways to mitigate the randomness. So being very strategic about taking your wounds will help mitigate the randomness because keeping healthy limbs can often give you bonuses to certain roles, as well as items using them strategically can help you mitigate the randomness. There are items that let you heal wounds or um, in some cases re-roll dice or set dice to certain numbers. So there are things in here that help to mitigate that. But that said, that's those are my really only my only gripes. 
So now some positives. Now, why don't you start us off with the positives? Because I have a feeling you have a lot of positives. <laughs> what? Well, why? <laughs> well, you, I can tell you're positive about this game. So go ahead. Um, well, I like the story, uh, the stories on the cards. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, okay, do you want me to jump in with one? Yeah. Okay. So, all right. I love the artwork in this game. I love the theme and the artwork. The theme, uh, the horror movie theme is brilliant. The artwork is awesome. I love the cartoony gore. I love the, the cutting off of limbs and blowing people's heads off. I, I love that. Uh, have you got any uh, another big positive you want to throw out? Or are you not uh, having trouble thinking at the moment here? It's fun. Oh, you, so just that it is an enjoyable game? Yeah. Okay. Another positive. There's no player elimination. They figured out a way, and this is brilliant. Um, so this is, hey, John Cone, you're awesome. You figured out a way to kill players without eliminating them. That's freaking cool. That is an amazingly awesome idea. I love that if you kill a player, they can continue as a ghost and may still be able to win the game. That's freaking awesome. I really like that. That's a great concept. You don't see that in games. Mm -hmm. So, um, okay, so we talked about the storytelling. We talked about, uh, on the negative side, the randomness. We talked about the fun artwork and the theme. And we talked about how there's no player elimination, even though players can get killed. But they keep playing his ghosts. Um, wh what else is there to talk about with this game? Oh, I um, wanted to talk about some of the production. But do you, do you, did you have sign? Well, it comes with an expansion. Oh, yes. It comes with the Krampus expansion included. Uh, so you can change up the type of uh, encounters you have to do a Krampus-themed game as well. Now, we haven't gotten into the Krampus expansion yet. We've been playing it without it for this review. But we looked at some of the cards just to have a, a glance so we knew like what kind of stuff there is. And it's it's significantly different than the stuff we've run into in the main game, like for the personas and items and such. Mm -hmm. So that is really cool. Uh, one other plus I want to talk about, there's a couple of items in here that production-wise I think is amazing. One is, and I talked I talked a little bit about both of them in the intro. One is the, the neoprene mat instead of a board, which is awesome i love the artwork on it i think it's fantastic and the other is the bloody dice the bloody dice are so cool uh we showed both of those up close in the intro to this video and i think they're both incredibly well produced and when we were initially opening this that, that was like the first thing i was like oh this board is awesome oh these dice are awesome immediately i was like i was loving that anything else you want to talk about with uh grindhouse i don't think so Okay, so are we just going to... I was going to say, it's a fairly simple game, so there's not a huge amount to discuss, but we've gone over some of our positives and some of our negatives. So now I'm thinking you're going to be a higher rating than me, so I'm going to let you go last. Because I... Well, you sounded like you really like it. That's, I'm guessing. All right. Okay, but I am still positive. Okay. And I'm quite positive. I'm going to give Grindhouse 7 out of 10 stars. And the reason I'm giving Grindhouse 7 out of 10 stars is because I quite enjoy this game. I think this game is a lot of fun. I love the horror theme. Um, I love the the taking turns and reading what goes on and occasionally having to vote to force somebody to be the person to go into the room before you know exactly what's going to happen in that room. I love all the gruesome storytelling. I love the artwork. I love the look of it. And I love the, um, I love the cartoony, violent, gore artwork on the wound chits for the characters. I love the way the wounds work, how you have to try to strategically wound your character when you get to choose where they take wounds, because if you take two wounds on your chest or head, you're dead. But even if you do so, I also love that the game's not over for you. And that's really cool. So that is seven out of 10 stars for me. That is <coughs> that is a thumb up for me. So what do you got? Oh. <laughs> um, I'm gonna give it an eight out of 10. So that's really high. So what goes into your eight? Um, well, there's storytelling. And you love storytelling. Yes. Okay. Um, there could be more storytelling, but like I said, but you know, they would have to adjust. But they have storytelling yeah. on every turn. I know. It's, it's, I think I just, I just want a longer game. You want a longer game. But I understand that how it is, they would have to like change it. But I think it's, I think. it to be longer. See, one thing that was funny is because you, you're giving this a higher rating than me, but in this regard, I think I thoroughly disagree with you. I think this game is the perfect length that it doesn't overstay its welcome. 
Okay. Uh, because if it was longer, you might be like, oh, it's a bit of the same again and again and again and again. And I mean, if you really want it longer, just play two games in a row. Yeah. I mean, you can totally do that. You can totally just start over again and play a second game right after okay. the first. So, uh, but other than that, you obviously really like this with an 8 out of 10 start. So that's a thumb yeah. way up from you. So that's one thumb up from me, one thumb way up from Lynn. Uh, 8 stars from Lynn, 7 stars from me. We both quite liked Grindhouse. So we can definitely... Now, if, if you are a horror movie buff as well as a gamer and you think anything that we talked about sounds interesting in this we can recommend grindhouse to you i think this is a awesome horror themed game and it very much reminds me of a lot of my favorite cheesy horror movies i watched as a kid and i think that's awesome i mean right mm -hmm. so we're in agreement on that all right so if you enjoyed this review and tutorial and you like to see us do more like it be sure to give this video a like, share it on all forms of social media, and if you haven't already, please subscribe to The Board Game Captain, that's Captain spelled with a K on YouTube, and hit that little bell icon on my channel so you get alerts every time I upload a new video. And if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, either on this video or on the game of Grindhouse, be sure to put them in the comments down below. And if you'd like to check out some of our merch, we opened a new merch shop over on Teespring. Uh, there will be a link in the description down below to check out our merchandise. Shirts stickers, and mugs. And until next time, game, game on. on.